Sappho was a female poet who lived around 600 BC on the Greek island of Lesbos. She is best known for her poems, though most of her poetry is now lost and survives only in fragmentary form. Besides being from a wealthy family, very little is known about her life. The names of both of her parents are uncertain, but her poetry was well known and greatly admired through much of antiquity, even up until this day. In fact, some of her same-sex poetry, particularly between women, was so influential that the island of Lesbos, where she lived, is what inspired our modern term for lesbian. This is one of the earliest surviving images of Sappho from 470 BC. She is shown standing next to Alcius, another poet and a contemporary of Sappho. Now that we know what she looks like, let's listen to some of her poetry, shall we? Hymn to Aphrodite Daughter of Zeus and immortal, Aphrodite, serene weaver of spells, at thy portal hear me and slay not, O queen. As in the past, hither to me from thy far palace of gold, drawn by the doves that o'erflew me, come as thou camest of old. Swiftly thy flock bore thee hither, smiling as I turned to thee, spoke thou across the blue weather, Sappho, why callest thou me? Zapho, what beauty disdains thee? Zapho, who wrongest thy heart? Zapho, what evil now pains thee? Whence sped the dart? Flies from thee, soon shall she follow, Turns from thee, soon she shall love, Seeking thee swift as the swallow, Ingrate, though now she may prove. Come, once again release me, Join with my fire thy fire, Freed from the torments that seize me, give me, O Queen, my desire. Ode to Anactoria That man, whoever he may be, who sits a while to gaze on thee, hearing thy lovely laugh, thy speech, throned with the gods, he seems to me. For when a moment to mine eyes thy form discloses, Silently I stand consumed with fires that rise like flames around a sacrifice. Sight have I none, bells out of tune ring in mine ears, my tongue lies dumb, paler than grass in later June, yet daring all, to thee I come. Cleus I have a daughter, Cleus fair, Poised like a golden flower in the air, Lydian treasures her limbs outshine, Cleus, beloved one, Cleus mine. To a Swallow Pandian's daughter, O oh fair swallow, Why dost thou weary me? Where should I follow? Evening Children astray to their mothers, and goats to the herd, Sheep to the shepherd, through twilight, the wings of the bird, All things that morning has scattered with fingers of gold, All things thou bringest, O evening, at last to the fold. Moonlight The stars around the fair moon fade against the night, when gazing full, she fills the glade and spreads the seas with silvery light. Grace What country maiden charms thy heart, however fair, however sweet, who has not learned by gracious art to draw her dress around her feet? Dead shalt thou lie. Dead shalt thou lie forever, and forgotten, For whom the flowers of song have never bloomed, A wanderer amidst the unbegotten, In Hades' house, a shadow I entombed. Death Death is an evil, for the gods choose breath. Had death been good, the gods had chosen death. 
love. All delicacy unto me is lovely, and for me, O oh love, thy wings are as the midday fire, thy splendor as the sun above. Prophecy Methinks hereafter, in some later spring, Echo will bear to men the songs we sing. The moon has set. The moon has set beyond the seas, And vanished are the Pleiades. Half the long weary night has gone. Time passes, yet I lie alone. I spoke with Aphrodite in a dream. Come to me, O ye graces, delicate, tender, fair. Come from your heavenly places, muses with golden hair. Thy form is lovely, and thine eyes are honeyed. O'er thy face the pale, clear light of love lies like a veil. Bidding thee rise with outstretched hands, before thee Aphrodite stands. Upon thy girlfriend's white and tender breast, sleep thou, and on her bosom find thy rest. In antiquity, Sappho was referred to as the poetess, just as Homer was called the poet. Plato hailed her as the tenth muse, and she was honored on coins and with civic statuary. And while her love poems are repeatedly praised as spontaneous, simple, direct, and honest, and in many ways paradigm changing for her time and culture, one can't help but wonder what her influences were. I like to imagine that she was somehow inspired by poetry from many millennia before her own time that is now lost to the ages. Well, not totally lost. I'll leave you with an excerpt of a 4,000 year old Sumerian poem, Inanna's Descent to the Netherworld. From the great above, she opened her ear to the great below. From the great above, the goddess opened her ear to the great below. From the great above, Inanna opened her ear to the great below. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. I enjoy making these videos. Please check out my books published on Amazon.com. Thanks again for all the comments and for sharing, and I will see you next time.